Hey, this is Tim Corey, and this is a special edition of my weekly video. During this Christmas holiday, I'll be spending time relaxing with family and friends. Instead of creating a typical video demonstrating some feature, system, or technique in programming, I decided to do something outside the ordinary. I get questions from fans every day asking for my advice on one topic or another. In this video, I'm going to give you the answers to some of the more popular questions I get asked. Now stick around to the end because I'll also be giving you a sneak peek at the year ahead. Now one of the big questions I get asked is how to become a great software developer. And the answer is so simple, some people miss it. The answer is practice. One example that has resonated with people that I've talked to about this topic is the example of running. If you set a goal to be a world-class marathon runner, what would you do? I'm sure you'd do some research on what the best running shoes are. You'd probably get an app to help track your runs. And you might even watch some professional trainers show you the various ways to make your running stride better. These are all great ideas, but they won't do you any good if this is where you stop. The most important thing a person needs to become a world-class marathon runner is to run. None of that other stuff matters as much as running does. Sure, you can make your runs more efficient, effective, but at the end of the day, running is what prepares you to run. The same is true for software development. If you want to be a great software developer, watching others code isn't the most important thing you can do. Writing code is. You need to be practicing everything you learn. And just like a runner, you need to be practicing consistently. To carry this analogy a bit further, the first time a runner runs, they don't do it in competition at least not a serious one. It takes dozens or even hundreds of runs before a runner is ready for their first real competition. Again, this is no different from programming. Your first application shouldn't be your real one. It should just be for practice. A lot of aspiring programmers look to create a real application right away. Their enthusiasm pushes them to attempt something they just aren't ready for. The end result is discouragement and failure even if they manage to complete the application. Imagine if I, a non-runner, decided to run a marathon as a first time ever running. Do you think I'd do well? Of course not. Does that mean I'll never be able to run a marathon? No. It just means I'm not ready yet. I haven't put in the training necessary to complete the task. The same is true for software development. You need to put in the training before you can accomplish your goals. This analogy also illustrates another item that developers often overlook. Even so experienced software developers need to practice and train. If a person ran a marathon in the Olympics and then they barely ran did any running in the next four years, do you think they'd be ready for the next Olympics? Of course not. The same is true for developers. It takes constant training and practice to maintain our skills. I've consulted for a number of companies and the one thing that I have often seen is skill stagnation. At some point, a company focuses so much on getting the job done that they fail to prepare for the future. They just worry about today until they find themselves 10 years out of date and irrelevant. At that point, it's very hard to get back to current. It's also very detrimental to the developers who are working in that system because their skills are also lagging behind. And that's why I encourage all software developers to be learning and growing, even if your company doesn't pay for it or provide time for it. Your career is your responsibility, not your employer's. Sure, it'd be great if your employer cared about your career, and maybe they do. However, you are ultimately in charge of your skills. Grow them and push them yourself to learn every week. That leads to the next question I get a lot, which is, how do I learn this new user interface? For example, right now I get asked a lot about UWP and Xamarin. On the other hand, I also get a lot of pushback on learning or using Windows Forms because it's been around for a number of years. Now there's two parts to this question and I try to separate my answer to people into those two parts. The first part has to do with which user interface to choose or learn. This is typically a misconception people have about user interfaces. You don't pick the user interface that's the newest. You pick the user interface that'll work best with your situation. Let's put this in terms of picking a new vehicle. If budget wasn't an option, 
you might pick a Lamborghini or a McLaren. And those would definitely be great choices if you needed a fast sports car. However, what if you had a family of four? Those cars don't have back seats. So they're a poor choice for your situation. So then you might consider a Nissan Leaf, the five passenger electric vehicle that will fit your whole family. Again, that could be a good choice, but what if you're doing a lot of driving, especially in rural areas? The range in the Leaf isn't good enough to cover the driving you'll probably be doing, and rural areas don't typically have charging stations. Do you see how making a choice without understanding the situation is unwise? What would be a great choice in one situation is a horrible choice in another. The same is true for user interfaces. Just choosing one and then trying to fit your application around it is unwise. Identify what your application needs and then make the best choice of that situation. That means two things. First, it means you won't always have the latest or flashiest user interface. And second, it means you need to learn all of the user interfaces available to you. So that's the first part of the question and answer. The second part has to do with what is really important in application development. A common misconception is that the user interface should drive the application. Really, nothing should be further from the truth. If your application development is primarily focused on the user interface, you're probably gonna create a subpar application. Focus primarily on your application's code. The user interface should be interchangeable. If more than about 20% of your application's code is in the user interface project, you most likely have a design problem. That's why when people ask me what user interface to learn first, I actually encourage them to learn C Sharp first. Learn the code, not the UI. That's the important part. Also, as you'll figure out as you mature in the language, the user interface is built with C Sharp code. Knowing object-oriented programming first will greatly improve your ability to understand even WinForms, let alone WPF, ASP.NET MVC, or others. Now, just a side note about user interfaces here, Microsoft is currently supporting and improving four major desktop user interfaces in C-Sharp. The console, Windows Forms, WPF, and UWP. All four are being improved. In .NET Core 3.0, the backend code for all desktop user interfaces will be .NET Core. That is because Microsoft sees the value in all four of these desktop user interfaces. So don't start believing that one of them is dead or shouldn't be learned. Okay, let's move on to the next question, which is about what order to learn C Sharp in. The easiest way to lay this out is to introduce you to my course series called Foundation in C Sharp. I'll link to the first one in the description below. In that first course, which is free, I outline the entire series and what we covered. That outline gives you a very clear picture of what order you should learn things in. Now, obviously, you could purchase each course as they come out and have me teach you what you need to know in the order you need to know it. However, you can also make the extra effort and learn each of these topics on your own for free. Whichever way you decide to approach it, I firmly believe in the order of this list. I've taught c -sharp developers in the classroom, online, and in person, and this order works out rather well. For example, learning about object-oriented programming before you start using WinForms makes your life easier because you aren't learning that WinForm is magic. This is essential for when the magic breaks. If magic breaks, you're helpless. If you understand how something works and it breaks, you can diagnose and fix it. One situation leaves you frustrated and defeated. The other leaves you encouraged and empowered. Guess which one I want for you. Now the final question I want to cover is one of a more personal nature. I often get asked if I can provide more direct one-on-one -on -one help. And honestly, I have struggled with how to answer this question for years. And while I'm finally at peace with my answer, it doesn't mean I love it. I love helping people. I love being there when understanding hits. Learning software development can be daunting and it can be hard. However, to be able to help encourage a person to push through and see them succeed is an amazing thing. Conversely, seeing a person get discouraged and start to fall is hard to watch. The struggle to become a great software developer often feels like hiking up a mountain in the dark in the snow. Having a guide who knows the path 
and can help you personally is invaluable. However, I'm only one man. I have a full-time job, a family, and a house to maintain. In my free time, I spend time with friends. I run a small consulting business. I volunteer at my church, and I work at my wood shop. So as you can imagine, I don't have a lot of extra time after all that's complete. However, I do block off a certain amount of time to teach. That teaching comes in the form of speaking at conferences, creating YouTube videos, creating courses, and responding to the help requests from developers like you. Now, what I've done is cut back on some of my consulting hours by selling courses. That's given me more time for teaching, which is why I'm up to two YouTube videos a week, plus multiple new courses and more on the way. If I were to personally train even a couple individuals, the amount of time I could spend on other training would be cut in half. If I took on four people and direct one one training relationship, I couldn't do any other training. All of that leads me to the conclusion that I just cannot do one one training or application development. There is, however, one loophole that a few can afford, and that is to purchase consulting hours. People often offer to pay me to train them personally, and I really appreciate the gesture because they recognize my time is valuable. However, like I said earlier, I've cut back my consulting hours by selling courses to replace the income. I only have a limited number of hours per week to dedicate to consulting. Therefore, because of the demand, my consulting rate is set at $350 an hour, and I require a minimum of four hours purchased up front. For those companies that purchase enough hours to qualify, I do drop my rate somewhat, but that's about it. Now, if you work for a company that has a few developers or you find yourself in need of a little guidance to ensure you are pointed in the right, right direction for your product, feel free to reach out. I'm typically booked for a few months in advance and I definitely don't take every customer who's willing to pay, but upfront training or guided project management and development can really save you a lot of money in the long run. Now, for everyone else who's watching, I'm sorry, I can't help you directly. Just please know that I really want to. My best advice is to follow that outline for my first foundation in C Sharp course and continue to practice. The full project course I have will also really help you raise your overall skill level. And that's a good segue into what's coming up for this next year. First, I'm gonna be taking over the Monday video slot for a while with a new free course. Over the next couple of months or so, I'll be creating an application from scratch. This one is going to be interesting. First, it's going to focus on something that we are all familiar with, commerce. We're going to build a store application. But instead of focusing on one user interface or technology, we're going to build out a full application with multiple user interfaces. Second, we're going to be using a lot of technologies. It'll include source control, unit testing, dependency injection, web and desktop user interfaces, SQL Server, and more. This third, this project is going to grow and change just like a real project. New requirements will come in, users will change their mind, new technologies will be introduced, and more. I spent a lot of time designing this course, and I can't wait to start giving it away. I'll be recording videos for it close to real time, so as suggestions and questions come in, I'll be able to cover them and adjust fairly quickly. If you see a bug, let me know and I'll fix it in an upcoming video. And best of all, all the videos and everything I cover in video form will be available on YouTube for free, okay? Now there will be some, some paid stuff that kind of goes around it if you want more supplementary stuff, but the focus, the videos will be free for you to watch just like my previous C-sharp application uh, course. Now what this also means is there is no video on December 31st. I'm still fine tuning the start of the course and I wanna make sure it's right before releasing it. Also, some Monday videos will be single subject training videos still. I won't get entirely away from them, so you might skip a week here or there in the course in order to cover another topic. But don't worry, we'll come back to the course as well and you won't miss anything. Finally, this is not going to affect the weekly challenge videos. Those will continue on as usual. Even when you're working on a big project, you should still take time to train. The next thing that's coming up this year is .NET Core. 
I know you've been eagerly waiting for the .NET Core videos, and they're coming soon. There's a lot to cover, but I'm almost ready to teach a topic. While I love to cover new things as soon as they come out, I feel that in order for me to teach a topic, I need to know the answer to my questions first so I can answer them for you. The issue is that I question everything. For example, I've been preparing to do an intro to Visual Studio 2019, which is out in its first preview form, for a couple weeks now, just to show it's coming out in the new version. However, I've got two open issues with Microsoft on bugs that I found, and I'm reaching out to get answers on a few more questions as well. That's just for an intro video. In-depth videos like .NET Core will need to take time to prepare for and get right. To bring us back full circle, one of the best ways that I've found to prepare to teach a topic is to practice it. I usually build three to five test projects to test out the basics and edge cases before I prepare to the project that I'll do for a video. Now, finally, this year will also include a number of new courses for sale. I'll be continuing my foundation in C-sharp series by releasing a new course about every other month or so. I hope to get a new standalone course out in the other months. The ones coming out directly after this video was published are the debugging course in the foundation in C-sharp series, and then the a .NET course that will focus on building a web application using Razor Pages and .NET Corp 2.2. The application we will build there will be a help desk, including authentication, reporting, and user-specific data views. After that course is published and the next foundation in C-sharp course is published as well, I'm looking at possibly creating an HTML and CSS course as well. Now stay tuned for more information on them and to do that, join my mailing list. In the description of every video on YouTube is a link to join the mailing list. That list gets exclusive discounts and insider information about the content I'm creating. I hope to even improve that experience in the upcoming months of 2019. You won't want to miss it. So that's what I have for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts about my answers or your pl my plans for the future. Leave me a note in the comments. Have a great holiday, and thanks for being a part of the I Am Tim Corey family.